There's plenty of epic debauchery in the annals of Greek legend and history, from pretty much any myth involving Dionysus to Alexander burning Persepolis during a bender. But the Romans, as in so many things, brought a certain distinctive grandeur to festivities, public and private. So, without any further ado, five of the most intensively excessive parties in Roman history. Number 5. Caesar's Quadruple Triumph Barbecue Any Roman triumph was spectacular. The victorious general rode through the city's heart in a four-horse chariot, his army marching behind, with shambling captives and heaping wagon loads of treasure. But no triumph, even the third triumph of Pompey, which lasted two full days and proclaims the capture of a thousand cities, ever matched the grandeur of Caesar's. In April 46 BC, after a decade and a half of almost continuous fighting, Julius Caesar celebrated an unprecedented quadruple triumph for his victories in Gaul, Egypt, Pontus, and Africa. Each of the four triumphal processions was a masterpiece of pageantry, complete with floats and painted dioramas of scenes from the campaigns. At the end, where the triumphal way ascended the Capitoline Hill, Caesar stationed forty elephants, each cradling a lighted lamp in its trunk. The games Caesar staged afterward were even more impressive, five days of gladiatorial combats and beast hunts, culminating in a battle between two armies of five hundred captives, each with twenty war elephants. Plays were staged in every neighborhood, performed in multiple languages for the benefit of Rome's polyglot population. Every Roman citizen was given grain, oil, four hundred sestertii, and a year's free rent. Then, having paid everyone's bills, Caesar threw the biggest government-subsidized street party in Roman history. Twenty thousand dining couches were set out, and huge quantities of meat and fine wine were served to all who wanted them. Five days later, Caesar staged an even grander banquet to ensure that every citizen had a chance to eat their fill. Number 4. Lucius Verus's Cocktail Party When he wasn't picking fights in Rome's dive bars, Lucius Verus, Marcus Aurelius's party-hardy co-emperor, spent most of his time in a succession of opulent villas and pleasure resorts, where he hunted, played dice, and sipped wine from his gargantuan crystal goblet. One of the many parties Lucius threw became proverbial for its extravagance. If we can believe the Historia Augusta, from which the following details are taken, it was a banquet for twelve. After each course was carried in, the servers presented the silver trays to the guests as gifts. After each round of wine, likewise, the guests were given goblets made from precious myrrh. As the meal progressed, the gifts accumulated crystal cups, gilded garlands, vases of purest gold, and finally, the slave servers themselves. Verus diced with his guests until dawn, and then he gave each a carriage, gleaming with silver, to carry them home. Number 3. Nero's Swim Up Lovins Nero lived large. Infamously, after a fire that he was rumored to have started engulfed much of Rome, he constructed his gargantuan golden house, which featured a 120-foot bronze statue of the emperor, a triple colonnade a mile long, a banquet hall with a rotating ceiling, and a vast central pool, large enough for Nero's fleet of pleasure barges. Nero really liked pleasure barges. Sometimes, he filled the enormous pool where Augustus had staged naval battles, launched dozens of boats, and held floating feasts, served and serviced by Rome's finest courtesans. Whenever he took his barges down the Tiber, according to Suetonius, Nero arranged for bars and brothels to be set up at intervals along the shore so that he and his companions could stop and take their pleasure whenever they pleased. He did the same at Baiae, his fleet drifting just offshore between piratical descents on the seaside villas of the Roman elite. Before we continue, a brief word about this video's sponsor. Peregrine Pendants is a Chicago-based specialist in crafting jewelry from ancient coins. 
started by a collector who wanted to share the fascination of classical numismatics, Peregrine Pendant's hand sets ancient coins in gold or silver mounts designed to showcase their beauty without damaging them in any way. The coins use range from Athenian tetradrams of the 5th century BC to American Civil War tokens, all purchased from reputable dealers and guaranteed authentic. Each piece is delivered to the customer with a silver chain, jewelry pouch, and detailed information about the coin. If you're looking for a specific coin, custom orders are available. Just email Peregrine Pendants to get your order started. If you have your own coins that you would like to wear as jewelry, you can send those in as well, as I did last holiday season. Go to peregrinependants.com and use the code TOLDENSTONE for 10% off any purchase. Returning to our topic. Number 2. Any Party Involving Elagabalus According to the unreliable but unfailingly entertaining Historia Augusta, the teenaged 3rd century emperor Elagabalus spent much of his time inventing new ways to antagonize the city of Rome. On one occasion, for example, it was rumored that he had hired a gang of snake charmers to gather hundreds of serpents and then, for no discernible reason, released said serpents into a crowd, causing mass panic. But what Elagabalus liked best was a good old-fashioned orgy. He partied with everyone, from the prefect of Rome to commoners. He was said to have couches framed in silver, draped with the downiest of rabbit fur cushions. The ceilings of his banqueting hall had movable panels, from which flower petals descended, occasionally in such volume that they smothered the unwary. Elagabalus reportedly devised primitive whoopee cushions, pillows made from skins that slowly released air over the course of an evening, leaving guests under the table. He tormented other diners by having them served wax models or pictures of food. His favorite party trick, we're told, was to unleash his pet lions and leopards on unsuspecting guests. He sometimes did this during dinner, allowing the animals, which the emperor, unlike his guests, knew to be tame, to leap onto the tables and couches. On other occasions, he waited until a visitor was asleep and then sent a lion into his bedroom. The Historia Augusta claims that several guests suffered a heart attack. Number 1. Rome's Millennium Birthday Bash According to a tradition accepted from the late Republic onward, Rome was founded in the equivalent of our 754 or 753 BC. During the early imperial era, Rome's anniversary came to be associated with the Ludi Seculares, or Secular Games, an ancient festival celebrated every hundred or 110 years. Claudius commemorated Rome's 800th birthday in 48 AD. Antoninus Pius celebrated 900 years in 147. So, as the year 247 approached, Emperor Marcus Julius Philippus, later remembered as Philip the Arab, prepared to mark the millennium with spectacular games. The traditional rites of the secular games came first. Heralds summoned the Roman people to a spectacle they had never seen before and would never see again. Torches and sulfur were handed out so that a purifying smoke would be raised. Three days of rituals and feasting followed, in the course of which the emperor presided personally over a nocturnal sacrifice to the fates. Though not quite on the scale of Trajan's famous Dacian games, a century and a half before, which had lasted 123 days and involved 10,000 gladiators, the games that followed were the most spectacular Rome had seen in many years. A thousand of the emperor's best gladiators clashed in the Colosseum, and famous charioteers faced off in the Circus Maximus. Alongside events featuring tame elephants, leopards, and lions, Philip displayed animals seldom seen at Rome, including a rhinoceros, hippopotami, and giraffes. Some of the coins Philip struck to commemorate his games featured animals from the Colosseum. Stags, gazelles, antelopes, lions, hippos. Other coins displayed an altar or the temple of the goddess Roma. Others still showed the she-wolf suckling Romulus and Remus, a millennium and more 
before one of the most memorable celebrations in Roman history. If you're interested in more Told and Stone content, including my podcast, check out my channel, Told and Stone Footnotes. I also have a channel called Scenic Routes to the Past, which is dedicated to historically-themed travel. You'll find both channels linked in the description. Please consider joining other viewers and supporting Told and Stone on Patreon. You might also enjoy my book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants. Thanks for watching.